What's going on guys? Today we're going to be making at least part one of Rebuilding Arsenal. This game right here, one of the most popular games on Roblox without using any scripts. That's right, you can build this entire game without writing a single line of code, and this is part one. Now, all of the resources, all the models, all of the little scripts and everything that you need to add from the toolbox will be in the description below, but let's go ahead and get started building Arsenal with no scripting. All right, so I am in Roblox Studio here. I just opened it up and I am signed in, that's important. And I have the new tab open and I'm inside of all templates. We're gonna use a template that Roblox has created for us so we don't have to write the team code ourselves, the team and the leaderboard and all that. We're just gonna use what Roblox has already made, which is super useful. So we're gonna choose the team slash free for all arena, team slash FFA arena. And that is going to open up this right here. Now we have these two menus open on the right hand side, Explorer and Properties. Those are super important. We're gonna use them throughout the course of the entire tutorial. So what we wanna do is go to View and make sure the two on the left, Explorer and Properties are both selected so that we get these two menus right here. We're gonna use these a ton. We're actually gonna use them right now. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the Home tab so I get all of my controls laid out here. I'm going to open up Workspace. Workspace is basically your entire game scene that you see. And then I'm gonna go into scenery and I'm just going to delete it. I'm gonna delete the entire scenery folder. So we can see if I zoom out here that all of the pre-made scenery is gone. Now, how did I zoom out to this position? Well, by using WASND to move just like you would do if you were playing Roblox on a PC and then the mouse. The right click will move me left and right and all of that and up and down and then the scroll wheel will actually zoom me in and out or you can just hold down W in the direction that you're facing to go in and out. Cool, so we've got some of the basics done. We've deleted scenery. We ha still have our spawns in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and make my map small. This map is really big. One of the really cool parts about Arsenal is that the map itself is really small. So the TTK or time to kill is really short. That is super important for games like Arsenal because they feel fast paced, they feel exciting. So we're gonna go ahead and create our own level. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a part in. It's really small. I'm gonna choose the scale tool to make it bigger. And I'm going to not scale it that direction, control Z to undo, but in the red direction, I'm gonna scale it up so it's a little bit bigger. And in the blue direction, I'm gonna scale it this way. So I'm going with about this size. You're going to do this lots of times. You're gonna go ahead and scale up your map, the floor here, and then play it, see if it feels good. But for me right now, I'm just gonna start with this and we'll adjust it as we go. Now that I have this part created, I want it to be the ground, which means I want it to stay exactly here. So I'm going to anchor it in place. This anchor means that it will not move. No matter what happens to it, this cannot move. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the terrain in my Explorer right here, and I'm gonna hit delete to delete it. So now we can see our spawn points are around the edge of the map, not exactly where we want them, but we're gonna leave them right there for now. But the terrain, all the grass and all that is all gone. So that we know that this gray pad, this gray part right here is what we're working with. Then I'm just gonna grab each one of these spawn points and I'm just gonna move them on to the map so that when we spawn in, we actually spawn in on the ground, not in the air, and we don't fall to our death. For now, I'm just gonna leave them scattered around the edge of the map because we're gonna put something in the middle and then we're gonna move our spawn points so they actually correspond with good spawn locations. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go into the starter pack. So we're gonna go into the player starter pack here and there's a rocket launcher in there. Now the rocket launcher is a super fun weapon, but it is not good for an Arsenal style game because it is a one hit kill. Super fun if you just mess around with your friends, but if you wanna build a balanced game, get rid of the rocket launcher. You could always add it in later, but for us right now, we're gonna delete the rocket launcher. Now, if we hit play on our game right now, we're just testing it out. This is not the actual final version of the game. And every single time we wanna test it out, we have to sit through this 30 second intermission. That is way too long, especially for testing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the play. I'm going to go into the server storage. 
open that up and inside of server storage, there is a configurations file. I'm gonna double click on that and it's gonna open up in my editor. This is the closest you're going to get to writing code in this video, but we're gonna go ahead and change the intermission duration from 30 seconds to two seconds. That way, when we test our game, we jump in and we only have to wait two seconds before we load into the game. We don't wanna set this to zero because we still wanna see what our level looks like from the intermission screen because that's what players are going to see, but we're gonna go ahead and change it for two sec to two seconds. Control S or Command S to save. Let's go ahead and give this a good name and save it someplace where you can find it. Now, if we jump back into our game and we hit play, we can see that the intermission takes one second, two seconds, and we're in. We don't have to wait 30 seconds to test our game every single time we want to test the game. Now we're going to go ahead and duplicate a level from Arsenal. The level that I'm going to duplicate is the house level, but you can duplicate whatever level you want. I would recommend starting with the house because it's going to give you a good sense of scale and what you should add or subtract from your game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up in this home tab and go to the toolbox. Now the links to all of the models that we know will work for this are in the description below. I would recommend that you follow those links so that you don't get a virus in your game. So I found a house that I think is going to work for my game. It's not gonna be perfect, but it is a good starting point. Now it is pretty small and if we actually play our game, where we spawn in at is pretty far away from the house. So it takes us a long time to run there. The house is also not super big, so you, you're not gonna fit a lot of players in here, but one of the things that we can do is actually scale up the house. What you could also do is add all sorts of couches and artwork and all sorts of cool stuff in the house to make it feel more lived in. For this tutorial, right now, we're just gonna use the empty house just for testing, but I do wanna make it bigger so that multiple players can fit in it and so that it feels a little bit larger than life. So I'm gonna go ahead and with the house selected, I'm gonna choose the scale tool and I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna scale it in the green direction so it scales everything evenly. Now, if we go ahead and jump in and play, we're gonna test our game a lot to make sure that we didn't scale it up too big so you can't actually jump up to any of the areas. Again, our spawn points are super far away. We're going to need to change that. But I can jump in here. I can go into the house. All of the stairs still work. They still work as stairs, I still walk up them. I can get like three or four players in this area. Obviously I wanna put up a wall or a big TV or a couch, something in the middle, something to make it a little bit more exciting. But again, that's not in this part of the tutorial. We will do that later. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we can see that all of these spawn points are scattered all over the map and they're outside of the house and the ground is big. So if you spawn out here, by the time you get to the house, if anybody's on the roof, they're gonna be able to shoot you down before you even see them. So what we wanna do is move the spawn locations and make this ground smaller. I'm gonna start by making the ground smaller. All right, so now the ground is just big enough to fit the house on it, so our map is the house. The map is not the ground around the house. Now I'm gonna move the spawn locations to interesting spots along the map. All right, all my spawn locations are now in the house or on the house. So they are quick to action. If you spawn in, you're instantly in the fight and they are spread out in evenly spaced locations. You're obviously going to need to play your game with friends to see if it works, but for now, this is fine. Now, we don't want everybody knowing where a player can technically spawn into, so we're gonna go into each spawn location, choose the de decal, and hit delete. And that will get rid of that little decal that is on top of each spawn location so that the player can't actually just sit and wait for a player to spawn. It's called spawn camping. It's something that you will learn as you play these games but we're gonna go ahead and delete those. And then what we also might wanna do is change some stuff about the actual part that is the spawn location. So for each spawn location, I'm gonna go ahead and select the top one, hold down shift, select the last one. Now I have all of my spawn locations selected. And then I'm gonna change the transparency to one so that they are all invisible. Now a player can't just sit and go, oh, this is a spawn location. I'm going to sit right here and shoot you as soon as you spawn in. That's no fun. 
Now we're gonna grab some weapons. The weapons that I'm going to use in this game will be in the description, but if you wanna grab your own, go for it. Just know there are a lot of weapons in the toolbox and most of them are broken. We will give you a list of weapons we know work and work well with Arsenal. So when we import a tool into the Roblox Studio, it's gonna ask if we wanna put a version of this in the starter pack. For most of our weapons, we're gonna say no. But for right now, let's just say yes so that the player starts with a weapon, but as we progress in this tutorial, we're actually going to remove any weapon in the starter pack. So we can see now in the starter pack, we have this red hyper laser, which looks awesome if we play our game. We now spawn in on the map with a gun, Already in our backpack, we can equip and we can shoot. It takes a little while to reload, so it's not the best weapon, but it's okay for the first weapon in your game. Now, technically, you have a game that is playable. This gun will kill other players, they will spawn in, you have a map to play with your friends, you have the game built. Now, it's not Arsenal, it's not the game, but this is a great first step. That is the part one of the tutorial series of how to build Arsenal using no scripts. For all of the remaining parts, if you want them right now, you do not wanna wait, sign up for codenerd.io. It's on there, you could just go. If you want to learn professional Roblox coding and take it to even a bigger step, codenerd.io and sign up. Everything that we use today and everything that we're gonna be using throughout the entire tutorial series is on codenerd.io. The link is in the description, so you can go directly to that page. All of the models, everything that you need to do to use to get this game working is on there. Hope you enjoyed it. Look out for part two.